It's 6 a.m. on a rain-soaked Monday morning. The airport is flooded with travelers. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the ride. Among the crowd is Joe Johnson of Huntington Woods. The former mechanical engineer turned robotics expert is catching a flight before the crack of dawn. As he steps into the security line, his family's morning routine is just getting started. 13-year-old Chris, 11-year-old Meg, and their mom, Mary, rush through the day's rituals on their own. All right, can you guys stack the dishwasher? Doing chores, packing lunch. <laughs> Even cello practice. Yeah, I need you to sign it. It's a day in the life of his family Joe never sees. He spends every week out of state working for a Navy defense contractor in Washington, D.C., a job he landed after leaving the auto industry and trying to start his own company called Robotic Amusements. His two older daughters are also away at college. At first it was weird, but then you kind of get used to him not being here, and he calls every night, so it's not like... He never talks to us or anything. We had kind of a triple whammy. We had the economy generally uh, had a, a problem. The Detroit area had a problem. This, this uh, housing market had an even bigger problem. It's a new reality, dividing more and more families and creating what some are calling recession widows, spouses left behind to hold down the fort. The Johnsons have been married for 25 years. I think she misses my dad. A lot. It's hard on the kids, you know, not having their dad there uh, during the week to go to games and, you know, events that they have at school. We're going to eventually have to do something to get ourselves back together. But I think this is, this is basically an indication of the kind of financial stress that the entire country is going under. strain on families is the rising cost of airfare. For the Johnsons, plane tickets alone run around $1,000 a month. He now comes home like every other weekend. Yeah, we really have to think about, you know, is it worth him coming home, you know, and being with us or, you know, it's, it's tough to make that decision. Jennifer Ward-Batts, an economist at Wayne State University, says this sudden separation of families is happening across the country, a troubling sign of the times. Certainly the last recession that we had was not nearly as deep as this one. It wasn't as severe. Michigan is hit particularly hard. Across town in Farmington Hills, another family is making difficult choices. Leslie Tausch's husband, Bill, had to move to Chicago in order to work. She's packing up the home where they raised their two children, the house with her custom painting on the walls, and a pencil mark growth chart she's kept for her kids. Now there's a sold sign on the front lawn. I'm sad to leave. I'm happy here. The family is happy here. But you have to do, you know, I guess, what you have to do. Bill, seen here with Coco the dog, works in advertising. He lost his job when his company lost the Chrysler account. He's been living in Chicago since January. He commutes back and forth or we go out and visit him. But he has his apartment for another month. And then we have to find another place for him to live until we can catch up. And there's another catch. While their daughter Eileen is at U of M, their son Mark is about to enter his senior year at North Farmington High School. Not the ideal time to pull up roots and move to a new city. I'm kind of undecided about the whole thing. We were either gonna, they were either gonna keep me here and I'll finish out senior year living with friends of my grandma or will go to a public school or a Catholic school. It's a dilemma the Tausch family is still sorting out. And like the Johnsons, they're taking things as they come. We're thankful that we have what we do have, you know, that he has a job at all. There's so many people who don't even have jobs. You have to play the cards you're dealt. So this is what we're playing right now. With families to support and children in college, what other choice do they have? Robin Schwartz, Fox 2 News.